Hi, thank you all for joining us. Uh, when I saw the documentary, I was just completely blown away by everything from the passion, the pain, but most importantly, the resilience that hopefully everyone was able to see. If not, there is a link to it um, in the chat panel. Um, so I'm so excited to talk to you all about all of this and introduce our panelists. Our first panelist, sort of, <laughs> is Keisha Allure. She is not here, but she's going to be popping in every once in a while in the chat section if anyone has any questions. Uh, she's the Director of Victim Services at Casa Ruby, an LGBTQ bilingual and multicultural organization in DC that provides social services and programs catering to the most vulnerable. Alexa Rodriguez is not here yet, but she will be here very soon. She's having connection issues in the COVID Zoom world we now live in. She's the director of Trans Latin X DMV. The organization advocates for the needs that specifically address the trans community in DC and in the surrounding area. The organization finds ways to improve the community's quality of life while also empowering and amplifying folks. And Trey Warren, who needs no introduction because she was featured in the amazing, amazing film. Thank you so much for everyone for joining us, uh, but especially Trey, I just wanna get into it. Um, oh, before we jump into the conversation, if you look on the side of your screen, you will see that there is a chat option. We're going to be taking questions throughout the whole conversation. We'll also take questions at the end, but if we say anything that resonates with you or that you want a little bit more clarity on, um, just pop your question in the chat section and we will take your question. Uh, so first off, Trey, we saw your journey throughout the, throughout the documentary. And so the first question that is on a lot of people's mind, including my mind, what are you up to now? When can we expect to see your line at New York Fashion Week? <laughs> what are you doing now? So now I work. I'm working now. Um, it's been a lot going on because I'm in the process of finalizing everything with buying my house. Um, I, that was a long road. Um, I saw UDC. I saw back at UDC come the spring. And I'm working a full-time job as well. Well, I'm working from home and working there. So it's I have a lot on my plate right now. I'm trying to like take some stuff off and do one thing at a time, but that's not gonna happen because I'm trying to pick up another job due to COVID. Oh so I'm trying to do two jobs and before I start school, so I can save, save, save. <laughs> Just trying to do a lot. Wow, it's like a lot of things is happening in the city, so. I'm taking and what are you? All the opportunities. What are you going to school for? Um, criminal with criminal connections. Okay. It's like criminal communication stuff like that. That's interesting. So before this panel started, we were talking a little bit in the green room or virtual green room about what life has been like with people meeting you on the street. Um, I'm sure a lot of people telling you that your story is empowering. Share a little bit about how it feels, whether or not you're in H&M or in Burger King and someone walks up to you and tells you that they saw you in the documentary. Yeah, so we're, um, <laughs> actually, it happened, it's been happening for like two weeks now, where I'm at work, and I'm doing my work, and someone come in there and whisper to me, and this recently happened, which was so weird, and I'm like, why are they whispering, because they whispering, I'm like, what are they talking about, but then, um, first it was one guy, he came in there, he was in a wheelchair, and he said, and I'm like, and he said it again, but I heard him the first time, but I, I, he repeated it again, and he said that I seen your movie, and I was like, oh, okay. He was like, I like your story, and then another person, the numbers came in, and I was like, oh, okay, this is weird. So, but it's fine. I, the love is just, it's, it's, it's good. To me, you know, I get used to it now. At first, I wasn't used to it, but now that I became used to, you know, having people watch it and you know they seen it for the first time and a lot of people who know me they still haven't seen it so when they see it for the first time like my family they just saying it like this year actually for the first yeah. time and they was just shocked of all the stuff that I was going through because I was able to hide mostly the stuff that I was going through I was able to hide that life and out uh, versus around my family they didn't even know none of the stuff was even going on with nothing so I put them in front of this movie and I 
I didn't even prepare them for it. So what was your family's what was your family's reaction when they saw the complexity of everything that you've been going through? Well, my my sister said first, and we had a screening in Baltimore, and I told her, I warned her, but she didn't want to listen. And I said, there's going to be some things in this movie that you're just not going to be comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And she was like, mm, okay, yeah, okay, whatever. And when that scene came up, the rape scene came up, she was just not here for it. It was like stone out, cry. Yeah. It was just that good. But I knew it was coming. I told her, there's going to be some things in this movie that you're just not going to like. I really cannot prepare people to see that because... I know I have to explain it to them afterwards, like after they see it. But I think that some of my family try to ignore it, but they still have questions. Like, when did this happen? Like, where you was at? Like, a lot of questions. But those questions I already had prepared myself for because I knew it was going to come eventually. I knew those questions was eventually going to come, but I just tried to stay away from, you know, stay away from even just keep talking about it and talking about it and mentioning it, but I know it's always going to come up because it's a big thing in the world and it happens to a lot of people. So I know I constantly have to talk about it, which I'm fine with doing. It's not a big deal now to me. It's not a big deal, but I know to other people it's fresh. So when they see it for the first time, it's like, oh my God, like when did this happen? Because I'm always happy and I'm always going in and you don't never think I'm going through anything. So. Uh, I definitely want to come back and talk about that scene because I think that was one of the most powerful scenes in the documentary. Um, Towards the end of the film, Ron said that he called you a leader. Do you see yourself as a leader? I never seen myself as a leader, but one thing that I always see in myself is that everyone always comes to me for everything. But no one will ever like look at me and be like, oh, what's going on with you? Are you okay? Are you going through this? Is anything wrong with you? No one ever came to me and said that. But I know that I had some type of power to actually always bring people together. I always get in certain situations, whether it's like beefing or something like that. I always knew how to, um, you know, just like squash stuff. I always was a, a, a quick person. Like, I think quick. So when I always, I never seen myself. And Mo used to, he used to start calling, he started calling me a leader first. He was like, you're a leader. You need to be an example. And I never wanted to be that person. Sometimes I always want to be in the background of certain situations. Like, I don't always want to be in the forefront. Like, and he will always push me to the forefront. Like, a lot of people always push me to the forefront because they see the potential that I have. But sometimes it's going to take me time because I'm not used to certain things. So, But I'm fine with it now. But I see myself as being a leader now. At first, I I couldn't see it. I just couldn't see far at that time. Well, you are definitely a leader. Uh, Speaking of leaders, I see that Alexa has joined us. Um, Thank you so much for being able to make this happen. Hi, how are you everyone? (laughs) All right, so we're going to jump into the next question and I want you both to um, give me your opinion on this. We know that Check It has evolved into something else. It's no longer a gang. Um, it's now this community center, a group of entrepreneurs, all of these other things, but is Check It still needed and not the community aspect because we all know that we need community. But in regards to the gang aspect where folks are able to use each other um, and use violence, honestly, as a way of survival, is that still needed? Who that was for me? Both of you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. What was the question again? I thought you called somebody else. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Both of you all. Um, I So we know that Check It has evolved into so many things. Um, but in 2020, is that aspect of a gang using each other, um, or rather using violence as a way of surviving in a world that can be very cruel, is that still needed? I don't think in 2020 it's still needed, but I believe that what Check It did, we did something in DC that um, that never been done before. And one thing we did was when Check It was together, it was you didn't see a lot of crime happening to LGBT people. It was a it was on a low. You didn't see a lot of um, <clears throat> things really um, a lot of assaults happening to the community 
um, as you did when checking was around. But now you see a lot of that happening again now because a lot of things that we did change. Um, I'm not saying that the things we did was perfect, but one thing I do know is um, we put a stop to a lot of things that were uh, normalized in this city. As far as like straight men putting their hands on trans people or gay people. No, you were not going to do that. You wasn't going to just walk up to a gay person and punch them in the face just because you just don't like gay people. So a lot of things we did now, we didn't go about doing them the right way, but what we did do is we brought change to the city. Now, because there's no checking no more, you do have a lot of people um, assaulting gay people. Now the crime is going back up for um, it, um, trans people, but it's no checking. I do think that if the LGBT community don't stick together, I do see mm. I do see um, a lot of hate crime coming back up on the rise in the city. I do think that um, I don't believe it's anything far as like we can do because I we not in that lifestyle no more. But far as like talking right. to people and trying to amend stuff, we can do. But far as like um, the LGBT community, you have to protect yourself. And I'm not saying go out here and do anything violent, but you have to protect yourself in this city. And a lot of times they don't want to hear your story. A lot of times they feel like all the gay people are in the wrong. All the trans people, oh, you lust and not for boys. Oh, that's why he did it. A lot of times it be, you not wrong. And we saying that a lot, like we were so disrespect, like we were getting disrespected in situations where um, it was just like, even in the movie, a lot of things in the movie, y'all didn't get to see, but we saw it far as like, even where, um, Police is disrespecting uh, the trans people, calling them by their boy name because they arrested them before, or calling them, "Oh, you're a male, you're a man, your name is this, your name is Tony," and it will it will be a lot of disrespect even coming from officials in the city. But a lot of stuff we change that. But I think that it's going to take a lot of work for ev a lot of people to get involved, not just check it, because it's not about check it anymore. It's about other people that's coming after check it. It's a lot of up and coming LGBT people that's coming behind check it. So right. I think that if we don't stick together because that's what check it is, check it stuck together. And that's why we were so much of a powerful force because we did stick together and we wasn't uh, backing down for nobody. Mm -hmm. Alexa, let me ask you the same question. I mean, when we look at the 2020, um, 2020 election, we've seen this year, we've seen so many more LGBTQ candidates winning office. So on one hand, it looks like there's so much more acceptance than what there used to be. But when we look at hate crime statistics, we know that's not true, mm -hmm. especially when you're talking about black and brown trans women. So um, yeah, just elaborate on what Trey said. Yeah. Um... I want to say first that I worked with Trey in the um, Department of Health two years ago, and I love her vibe. <laughs> I love her energy. Oh my goodness! And watching the movie touched me because I come, I have the same background, even that I'm a Latina. Mm -hmm. I'm from El Salvador. Uh, we we had the same experience. Like we don't have like a gang a uh, gang of person but we have like chosen family who were go for it when we we need something so amazing so thank you for sharing everything in that movie to everyone um i think it's hard for me to talk about politician and politics because they lie to us a lot <laughs> This was my first time voting and it was hard to me to pick a candidate because mm. maybe um, Kamala and the, uh, the elected president are have a plan for the LGBTIQ plus community, but I want to see that in reality. Yeah. No one, I have lived in the United States for 10 years and no one has talked about, and I'm saying no one in the power, like in the big white mm -hmm. house and the assembly and all those things that they have power they no one talk about the trans mothers the you know they they don't do that aloud and they don't do laws like yes they hate crimes but that's that doesn't resolve anything it wasn't until last year during the debate that someone say something about a trans being murder so when we don't talk about this and the higher power nothing will change so we don't we don't need laws. We need actions. Yeah. You know, 
in this administration, they have been attacking us a lot. After Obama, we have a lot of protection, we have a healthcare, and we feel safer, you know? But since this new administration came, we were attacked since day one. And we still under attack until this man get out of there. But there's some sort of um, sentiment of uncertainty that I don't know what will happen with this new administration come because they can say whatever they want, but promises are not fact. So for right. me, I'm in my head, I'm just like, hmm, what it come next? Because I remember when, when uh, these two politicians were uh, attacking sex worker. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of sex work in, in, in the trans community because there's not a lot of opportunities. So right. I'm, I'm in suspect. So I'm not sure if I answer your question, but that's the sentiment that I have right now. So Right, right. Uh, one thing that, well, I want to say, uh, I believe Keisha is here. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe not. Uh, Keisha, if you are here, jump on in. Um, so you actually brought up something that I also wanted to talk about. We, yeah, um, here. oh, hey there. Hi, uh, do you want to add, do you want to add anything, um, to that? Just, you know, around while check it is no longer a gang, do you still need that sense of violence as a way of survival? Um, both Trey and Alexa spoke of chosen family. Is there anything that you want to add to that? So uh, absolutely. First and foremost, I want to uh, just commend and congratulate um, the Check It, just the whole enterprise and the family, because it's a family. You know, they're family first, and they showed that, although through the historical trauma, through the violence, through everything, those girls showed that they were a family through it all, through the good, through the bad. They gave advice. They facilitated a safe space. They fed each other. They taught each other. That is a family. Right. And secrets of survival is family. Family first. You go in, you create a foundation, and that was beautiful. And although we saw the violence and we saw all of the hate crime and everything, we saw that they built a family. And they are going to remember that through, through, through the days of their life, right? So do I have anything to add to that as a DC native, uh, African-American woman living as trans and now facilitating facilitating safe spaces for the next generations such as the check it absolutely no mm -hmm. we don't need the physical violence but yes we need how loud they stood up we need those actions so we do have alternatives we can work on different alternatives and ways that they will hear us in the way that they heard those girls when they brought the violence. So we don't have to bring the bottles physically, but if we can bring them uh, vocally, virtually, right? Because yes, we fit in the term, uh, what, what I'm, because I've, I've pretty much excluded it from my vocabulary, but yes, we are a vulnerable population. We are disenfranchised in all of the terms that you want to fit in of how the community see us. However, we are human first and not to disrespect any cisgender man or woman, but we are just a, a group of individuals, human first, mm -hmm. that guess what? Guess what? We are your children. You birthed us before we turned into anything. Anything. And so if we was anything other, uh, other than a human being, then you should have took us to the pet shop, not put us out. You should have took us to the whatever you thought we was other than human. And so trans people not only were they behind the, 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 um, the walls of somebody's 
sexual preference and things like that, we facilitated the greats and made sure the greats that are out there living their life on the front lines, we made sure that the dresses were pressed immaculately and the hair was done immaculately. And the highlight of your makeup was chiseled. It was the LGBT member behind the walls. Yeah, it was that. Mm -hmm. If I can just speak on that. Mm -hmm. So we can bring the noise. No, we don't need the violence in that manner because they've pretty much branded that no, you will not hurt this part of the human community. We have rights. Mm -hmm. And it's tied that it, it, it's, it, it's, it's final. It's done that we live in the shadows and in the cracks and in the disenfranchised of, uh, it, it's done. It's done. It's pretty much done. DC is a wonderful place. It's a hub. It's a community. It's a culture. And we bask all in it. And we shout. Oh. Yes, ma'am. I love that. I especially love it. You said bring the noise. I love that so much. Yeah, bring the noise. We fit in and we should. Right. right. Um, as a journalist, I'm always interested in how other community, how other journalists are covering LGBTQ issues in their communities. Yes. Um, there was one part of the documentary where we saw the local reporter um, branding this as a gang and really focusing on the violence. Trey, did any of the journalists um, ever tell your stories accurately? Did they ever do a good job portraying the complexities of what Check It is and showing that it wasn't just a gang? It's like everyone says, it's a family. Not at first, no, mm. not at first. Even when we started doing the positive things, we couldn't get nobody to cover it because mm. they only knew it from one way. Just like when we had right. fashion shows and stuff like that, we couldn't get no one to for them to even come out to film it like we wanted them to like at least come and show that we doing something positive they were only covering the negative things but that was at first but then we, uh ron thanks to him he kept fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and uh like going to them it was exhausting to us but he kept fighting like no they changed this is what they doing you will see when the movie come out you will see like he kept going to them and really fighting for them to actually come and see what we're doing they wouldn't even come and see like i remember uh, passing out flyers to the fashion shows that we were doing at first and they will uh, people would be like oh no I have to ask my supervisor in order to pass those out they would have to get permission because they knew the name and it was only violence came behind the name but no one never knew our story no one even cared to know all they wanted to know or remember it for one way and I want to invite oh, all the panelists did. to jump in on this part of the question because this is an issue we see oftentimes <sighs> in the media where whether or not it's misgendering, um, they never tell, and they as in, I am a journalist, uh, so I'm talking yeah. about my industry as a whole, but they often fail to tell the complexity of LGBTQ stories, but especially stories surrounding trans women of color. So explain to people watching why this is so problematic. It is problematic to me and to many people because the it's so disrespectful to ask the name or what was your name before? Have you had the surgeries? All those things are so disrespectful and or out in people. Like if someone doesn't want to show their faces, that's that's their choice. So, but mm -hmm. like Trey say, they want to to have this. I don't know, this, this news about what we're doing maybe wrongly or whatever to their eyes. So they, cap they want to captivate the public just for like sensational news. And that's not good for anyone because you are portray portraying one side of our, or our story. But all the amazing thing that we are doing, no one wants to know. During this pandemic, Trans Latinx DMV raised more than $100,000 to spread 
over undocumented community. I, <laughs> I look for many journalists to cover this story. No one reached out to me, no one texts me back. No one wants to talk about that because they didn't care, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important to, to, to show this story because we are human. These people need to, to forget about what we have between our legs. They have to forget about what we do in the bathroom that, that doesn't care. Uh, the important thing is that we are humans and that's the, the part that we have to show to people. So even when people are being killed, it's, it's horrible when they misgender the person or when they bring the name of the parent gave them to them. That's so disrespectful and it create more hate and transphobia to our community. Mm -hmm. So you have to start listening and listening to us and what we have to right. say. Yeah. Right. Keisha, are you still on? I feel like you probably have a lot to say. Are you still on, Keisha? Um, yeah, I'm oh, here. Yes. Uh, you know what? Honestly, until mm -hmm. you have journaled with a member of the LGBT community, that's pretty much like that's just the question that's gonna be unanswered because you have to sit in the human spirit to understand that yes, we have a label called transgender community, but go back to the sort, go back to the grassroots, go back to the beginning. We are human beings. And until people go back to that, whether it's uh, first school and stuff like that, please know that. So only when you when you sit in that spirit and know that these are human beings who have just not been um, appreciated equally as human beings on this earth, you have to sit in that emotion. And then only will you know why people are not journaling the full story. Maybe it's going to uh, cause their career to be, um, you know, diminished or anything. I don't, you know, uh, that's a human question. That's an individual question. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. as, as well as we can ask, well, Sophia, why didn't you press my hair out like you did Jennifer? Why didn't you slay my bob like you did Jennifer? I come to you every day. And guess what? The answer, the, the stylist will only know. She will, uh, her, she will only know the answer to that question. She might be like, well, between me and you, Jennifer tips me more. Between me and you, I actually love Jennifer's spirit, regardless of if she's a lesbian or not. You know, so the individual will only know that answer. You know, you, do, do you feel me? Right, right. You know, people have to know what the action is in, the, in, the, in that spirit. And you have to know what you are doing and, and, and you have to have a conversation with yourself as you develop and chronicle and journal other human beings, whether man or woman or trans, what these experiences are. This is not a rehearsed, um, that, that's not a rehearsed thing that they did. These are their girl, these are these girls' lives. These are these young people's lives, right? So yeah. Um, whether it's um, whenever, when LGBTQ young folks are kicked out of their homes, they are often forced to go into survival mode doing whatever they need to do to survive, which is a lot of what we saw in the film, whether or not it's gang violence, homelessness, homelessness, survival sex, whatever. What do activists, lawmakers, elected officials, regular citizens, what do they need to do to sort of help folks in this situation besides parents not kicking out their children, besides the <laughs> obvious there? Well, you know what, honestly, and this is so honest, I have searched in my human spirit. I have searched in my DC native spirit. I have searched as a 
director of victim services, you know, assisting the young trans people, you, they have got to realize that it can be any one of their mm -hmm. little human babies that they just so happened to birth and they showed all the beautiful pictures and they took and put all the, and put them in the best schools. And then guess what? When you're 13 to 15, you start developing into a little bigger human being. And those emotions and those hormones start to develop in the way the individual human being wants it to go, whether it's a gender dysphoria or a quote unquote straight, you, you see what I'm saying? So to all those individuals, human beings who just so happen to sit in the title of a politician and that like that, please remember the little baby or babies girls or boys, twins that are at home being facilitated by your safe spaces and things like that, one day on a Wednesday or today, the decision would be made by them. And it might just be a transgender individual. It might just be a gay young man who's just going to embark on a career who's a, you know, as a president or you see what I'm saying? These mm -hmm. are human beings coming before our eyes who just so happen to be a member of a community mm -hmm. called LGBT. Alexa and Trey, do you all have anything? Yeah, um, I think what it has to be done is uh, laws to protect our children, um, especially in school. I remember how many people has been fighting against school system for protection on the bathroom or the lockers mm. and all that stuff. And that has to be a law to protect our children. <clears throat> also funding to, for the shelter, the, the youth program, all those stuff have to be funded by the government, not local, but also um, nationally. And also to create a funds or funding trans-led organization, you know, because we are the experts. We know how to guide this trans and gender non-binary youth because we have the experience on life, because we have the academic experience. We have all the, the experience that we that we need to guide this these kids. So funds the trans uh, led organization that's are, are key to so create programs funded by the local government, not by, I mean, anyone can support that, but especially the governments because we as a citizen, we have to be protected by our governments. And um, the parents, please love your children. They are your children, so embrace them. Not, not only because they're your children, they're human beings. So we are here not, uh, we are not dangerous at all. We are in danger when you put us out of the street. Miss Polly, Miss Polly. Keisha, oh wait. Yes, I, I was asking, um, I wanted to ask Alexa if she agreed that right now her organization is visible it's thriving. Casa Ruby is visible. It's thriving. I believe we do need funding. We do need love, right? But we need those people, the people who are sitting in the chairs to make the decision, not tomorrow, today. They have to become aware that if we are tired of crime. We are tired of whining and saying what we need because we have been saying what they know we need as human beings. Yeah, we trans and we run in the organizations, but that is already been done. It's on black and white. We're doing it. You're doing it wonderful, right? Look at Trey, look at Trey. Look at him. Go up to 7530 Georgia Avenue and look at Chloe. Look at Chloe. 
Those girls are doing what they needed to do and doing what they said they were gonna do all throughout that documentary that was yesterday. So the answer, right, to all of our questions and things like that, these people gotta get aware, they gotta sit in the emotion that guess what? You're looking at your daughters and your friends. So if you don't love what you have in your own homes, then guess what? They're not, it, it's not gonna change. It's not gonna change. Yep. Uh, speaking of resources, one of the hardest scenes to watch in the documentary, one of the scenes that made me the angriest is uh, when Trey was trying to get help for her sexual assault. Um, talk a bit about, we know funding is an issue, we know resources are an issue, but it's especially problematic for LGBTQ folks of color. So if you all can talk a bit about some of the barriers that LGBTQ victims of sexual, sexual assault and rape face when they're trying to get help, whether or not it's the police or a crisis center. Okay, I guess I will let someone else kind of chime in, but I do have an answer to that. And it's still, <laughs> a, it's, yeah. So when we, um, that particular, um, can y'all hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm, we hear you. Um, that particular scene that we, um, that rape scene that we did, um, that particular scene was hard to do because I couldn't get help because it did not happen in the District of Columbia. It didn't happen in DC. It happened in Maryland. So because it didn't happen in this jurisdiction, they couldn't do anything to help me. But um, it, ha it happened in Maryland. So that whole thing, uh, which I saw, was really what happened. And they didn't have anything in place in Maryland for the LGBT community. Nothing. I'm not sure if they have anything now, but at that particular time, they had nothing mm. in place. And exactly what y'all heard, exactly what happened. And we tried to uh, get any type of, um, I tried to get any type of help or any type of, and the crazy part with that particular scene was, um, this was a situation where I'm not, I think he, this particular person, he did it to a couple of other people. So he was already uh, known for doing stuff like this. And the police is, um, already knew at that particular location, they got calls before. But um, no, they didn't follow up with us. Um, me and Dana had called. No, we didn't get any help. No assistance, no anything. And I came over to DC trying to um, file charges and do stuff, but it's, it didn't happen in DC. So they couldn't help me. So exactly what y'all saw, exactly the run around. And that's all we, um, I had to deal with that. Yeah. I want to say thank you, Trey, for not only doing the scene in the movie, but also for sharing this right now mm -hmm. and being so resilient and strong to share that. Thank you for that. I, I cannot imagine. Um, yes, Maryland sucks. Like, um, I'm also have been raped in the past where, when I recently moved from El Salvador to here by a police officer in his, um, in his, um vehicle uh yeah. did i put a complaint no because i know that i i, I knew that i will not be in her mm -hmm. and, and so it was hard um i think i shared my story with a detective and they were shocked to hear about my story and i was like yeah right it's shocking that someone who will protect me is abusing me so it's hard. So what do we do in the past with other trans women, especially trans lat lat Latina women? That's um, the population that I work with. Uh, we go to the news. We go to Univision. We go to, to Telemundo. But we find allies in there who are willing to, to put that news in the air. Because we know that sometimes we can be object to be you know, that sensational news about what is happening. But also I think it's needed to be in this agency the are to protect rape victim, victim of rape. Uh, they have to have someone who is, um, who know how to treat a trans person or a gender non-binary person, because when they don't know, they will mess up all the things and they will be misgendering, they will be their name or asking ridiculous question or, um, saying that, oh, well, you're part of the LGBT community, so maybe you were 
in the street trying to Tricking. find yeah exactly. they exactly. just put these labels on you and they uh fight against you and say oh well were you out there with this or then they start talking about what you have on or was you out there working but does yep. that matter that's not even the point the point is if i'm sitting right here telling you that i done been sexually violated what I was outside doing, or if I'm outside, that has nothing to do with what I'm right here telling you. And that, you see that a lot, but I think a lot of that is, one, it's a lot when it comes down to that, because even when you're talking to the police, sometimes they don't even know how to address you. And I feel mm -hmm. like in the LGBT community, it's our job to correct them off the break mm -hmm. because if they misgender you correct it there don't allow them to misgender you and have the conversation take on and on and on and they've been calling you out your name from the beginning of the conversation and none of a sudden you want them to call you something else no fix it from the beginning so when they misgender you correct them there so they know that no mm -hmm. no you know correct them but i feel like it's a lack of uneducated a lot of the law enforcement and services, a lot of people are uneducated when it comes down to our community. And that play a part too. I learned so much behind this movie and the lack of education that's in the community is crazy. With just as respect, you realize when you do, when I, I realized doing this movie, people just not respectful. Mm. I don't even think it have anything to do with, um, Things like, oh, what are your pronouns? They don't even know how to, to address you as hello, how are you? And I feel like we always had to explain ourselves, always had to explain ourselves every, about everything in the movie. How this, why this, why this? It will be so many questions. It would just be so exhausting. And I remember times that was more draining than to sit there and just have a conversation. And what we learned was just having conversations with people, they look at you different. It's, they don't see the same person, the violent person that they put this, um, right. that they picture you to be. They see a totally different person when they have a conversation with you. And that used to be so exhausting. It used to be times I used to have to tell Ron, like, I don't want to talk to them no more. I don't want to talk to them no more. And, then, yep. and I'm not going to talk to you no more. Like, I know how to just walk away from the conversation. Because I could mm -hmm. see in, two, in five minutes, two minutes, you could tell where a person, mm -hmm. how they gonna respect you in a conversation. You could already right. tell how the conversation going to go. And um, we deal with that a lot. We still fight every day um, to protect our name because we kept the name Check It. That was a big thing for us because it was a part of us. A lot of people ask us, why do we keep the name? Why the movie is called that? Check it as a part of us. That is who we are. Mm -hmm. Why would we change it and run away from that's that's a part of us? No matter mm -hmm. where you go, no matter where we go, that name is always going to be a part of us. No mm -hmm. matter what. Check it is always going to come behind our name. And we kept our name. It was important for us to keep our name. And then we turned our name into a business. That's how you do it. And then we inspire <laughs> other people to do it because when we were tribal and stuff like that, a lot of other gang members and people like that, they were going to do the same thing. Because it was something that mm -hmm. never been done before where you take, um, a lot of times people get out of gangs and stuff and they change mm -hmm. their brand, they rebrand themselves and they get on a different path. But what we did was we took the gang name, the same gang name that they said that we were violent and tan of DC. We took that same name and made it an LLC. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of questions, but before I jump in the questions, Keisha, I know you wanted to add to this. Are you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. I just wanted to uh, just add to Trey that yes, that was that was wonderful that you guys kept your brand because mm -hmm. although you chronicled um, violence and trauma and you know all those different experiences, that is a part of your it, it's a part of the culture, mm -hmm. and so it's also going to bring like you said respect. And so you, you guys won't be 18 and 25 years old. There's going to be a whole nother generation coming after you, right? Mm -hmm. And so everything that you guys went through, well, it, that, that the documentary kind of like summarized it up for the younger generation. 
so they can watch it over and over and over and kind of like take it in from their own perspective, right? You see what I'm saying? Like me coming up in the 90s, right here in Southeast, all the streets in every corner down to the school. I just, I remember, I remember, I remember. But I, I think the only difference in my trauma and coming up, I was afraid to come outside because of all of what I heard. I heard all the violence and things like that, but I still had to go to school. So um, someone asked me, what was your secrets of survival? I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know because yes, I saw those I, I saw all of the warning signs of, and all uh, some of my friends, of even even some of my girlfriends are, that are not here, were the ones who experienced the physical violence and the sexual, you know, assaults. And maybe I've I've experienced the hate, um, the 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 different names because I was taller and maybe my voice was deeper, so I got the backlash of calling me out my names and you know, oh, your hands are big and we can tell you're not a girl and things like that. And like Trey, we didn't know who to go to. Mm -hmm. So now today, guess what? Trey can just say, sweetheart, in your 17 year old, you know, uh, life as a transgender or just an individual who don't know where to turn, watch this before you think you're going to experience anything that we've experienced. All right, we're going to take a couple of questions before jumping back into the discussion. Uh, the first question, Trey, someone wants to know if you are working uh, at the fashion store in DC. <laughs> you're not working there. <laughs> Star, um, Star and Erica is there. Let me see. Star um transition so Star is the one that that's in the movie um that was arguing with the police mm. so, so you'll see star and ron there and erica is there was she there yeah she was in the movie too um i'm not sure see i can go through the movie but um she was the one in the movie that um mm. had like green hair and we were walking down mm. the street and i was right. talking to ultimate out was exchanging words yeah, so them two mainly there, but I don't be there because I work. I'm busy. <laughs> you work, you're going to school, yeah. you got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, let me read through some of these comments. Um, someone wrote, this isn't a question, just a comment. Someone wrote, transgender issues are a fairly new and mostly unknown thing for most people. I think things will get better, just like it did with gay and lesbian issues, but will take some time. It is about telling your stories and helping people to understand the humanness. Does anyone want to respond to that comment? Okay. It's hard <laughs> next... to answer, but I will say that it's nothing new. We have been surviving and thriving for so long. Like like um, Keisha say, um, she has been a struggling when she was going to school and everything. Um, same as immigrant, when we come from our country, we, especially myself, I was um, running from violence, you know, and transphobia from my country, not only for society, but um, for, for the government. So we don't have a, a who protect us. In United States is the same. We have identity loss, but crime still happening and it's not nothing new. This has been happening for so long. It's now that we can talk more and be more out, you know, be, but it's nothing new or trending. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else wrote, we need more black LGBTQ people in our government. Have any of you thought about running for office or is there anyone in your community who is? I'm sure there are tremendous obstacles. So first part of the questions, anyone have any interest in running for office? Mm -hmm. Alexa, I know you're kind of, dissuaded by the political process right now? <laughs> I am, I am. Um, I've been thinking a lot, but I think I need more education in the political uh, aspect because yes, I'm always fighting against the laws uh, against us. 
and doing a lot of advocacy and lobbying in the Senate and all, all the stuff. But I think it's, there's a lot of responsibility uh, to be represented in our community because there's, there's so, it's so diverse then not all, all of us will represent one community. So, uh, but I'm happy to say that Sarah, um, Sarah McBride, I think I, maybe I, I'm saying that her name wrong. She's the first openly Senator from Delaware. So we have a lot mm -hmm. of people now in the Senate, but we need more, especially, but we, we need opportunities. So if you see someone who wants to run, support them in your community. So every change are made from the community. Right. Uh, someone else, oh wait, sorry. What were you gonna say, Trey? I said, I don't have any interest in running <laughs> because this last administration and what they have going on, it's a lot of things that I've seen that, no, that is wrong, disrespectful, and no one is holding no one accountable for the things that come out their mouth. And yep. no, I just stay away. <laughs> <laughs> and one person will not make the change. So that's the hardest thing that I'm thinking about. Like, what I'm going right. to do there just by myself, I, you know, it's hard and traumatized. I, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone else asked, uh, what, is bringing, what is bringing you joy today? Trey, we'll start with you. What today is bringing you joy? Um, helping other people. Um, staying focused. Um, I think that's important. I think now due to COVID, it has put me on a journey to give me more time because before COVID, mm -hmm. I was at work from 10 a.m. in the morning all the way to 6, 6.30 at, in the afternoon. So that was most of my time. But now this gave me a lot of time to just focus on other things and just focus um, on so many other things that I want to do in life. I think mm -hmm. that we have an opportunity now. I feel like all of us as LGBT people, we are in a um, situation now where it you can actually do anything you want to do. There's no limitations to what you can do. And I feel like we can take advantage of everything. Um, I'm excited about doing this. We actually talking about doing another film because people keep wanting okay. to know, what are we doing now? What's yeah. next? When are we going to get in part two? But that so we've been trying to figure out that because it takes a it takes a funding, it takes a lot mm. of resources, it takes mm -hmm. a lot of time, energy, attitudes. It's a lot when you're doing that. So um, we don't know. I don't know, but I do want to do it. I don't have a problem with doing it because I know it's for the people because the people want to see what we're doing and we're doing a lot over the past mm. five six years. Check it has changed so much. So much right. stuff has happened and in a world of check it. So I don't know who's, who knows. <laughs> Alexa, what about you? What is bringing you joy today? <sighs> Just be able to breathe and, and to be alive. I think I'm lucky enough to be alive because, um, you know, this month is the Transgender Awareness Month and also uh, Transgender Day of Remembrance happens. And every year we count more than 35 trans women of color being killed. I think this year we passed over 35 in the stats. So I think it brings me joy to be alive, but also like Trey say, supporting other people out there um, and be able to do it because during this pandemic, but also during this pandemic, the trans violence, the transphobia didn't stop. It stopped everything else, but the transphobia and being killed. And so being able to support others, it's hard because you have to deal with your own traumas, with your own situation and stuff. So um, it brings me joy, but at the same time, it brings me sadness because there's people who are not here anymore with us. Keisha, if you are with us still, what is bringing you joy today? Wow. Um, well, uh, right now, what's bringing me joy is, like Alexa said, that I am alive, that I'm alive, you know, that, and although, you know, that can be like so vague and cliche or whatever, if people's like, yeah, you're alive, but like, what's really make bringing you joy? Well, if we can just, kind of like sum it up. Um, I am a part of a community that 
is still chronicling historical trauma. We are, we have like, like, a, like Trey said, we have so many opportunities and I'm a part of leadership. I'm a part of that opportunity. I'm a part of someone's resilience. As a director of victim services here at Casa Ruby, which is a 24 hour respite care center for young trans homeless youth, I facilitate 168 cases in the aftermath of their crisis. And so to sit and open those files at in two and three in the morning and then come up with a safety plan and facilitate that and to see that come to fruition, that brings me joy. And yes, it's exhausting because I can be on Snapchat or why, or shopping or doing the stuff after work and things like that. But there is work to do. There is work to do. And check it, the documentary and all the great things that the girls out here are doing and the trans people out here are doing, it cannot go in vain. So this brings me joy. Miss Major say, I'm still fucking here. <laughs> and that was me, <laughs> I'm still here. We'll stay here. I love that. Uh, so someone else wrote, uh, Alexa, if you are interested in political office, check out the human rights campaign. They might be able to help. <laughs> we need to hear your voice. And I agree. I don't live in D.C. I can't vote for you, but your voice definitely needs to be heard. <laughs> Thank you for that. I, I have some friends there, but I'll think about it. <laughs> I live in Baltimore, though. Uh, someone else wrote, you all have inspired me today. And while I don't know you personally, I love you all. That's from Fran Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we have about 15 more minutes left. If anyone has any other questions, drop them in there, but we'll jump back into the discussion. Uh, Alexa, this is a question that I wanted to um, ask you specifically, but everyone else, please feel free to chime in. Mental health was one of the themes that we heard so much in the, in the film. Trey mentioned someone living inside her who was not depressed. Someone else in the film said she was sent to a mental health facility when she was younger. So what does mental health resources look like for black and brown LGBTQ folks? I mean, I, I'm a, I, I know all right off the bat, it's lacking. <laughs> yes. It is. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> go for it. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'm sorry. I just wanted to let y'all know, Ron is in here now. Oh, you there's him? Ron. Hey, so Ron. I have questions <laughs> for him, he's Hi. in here now. Hello? I can't hear you. All right, if anyone has questions for Ron, drop Hello? them in. Yeah, can we, we can hear you, Ron. Yeah, we all hear you. <laughs> um, all Hello? right, so Ron will get that figured out with, with Kevin. Uh, in the meantime, Alexa, if you can talk a bit about the lack of mental health resources for Hello? the rainbow community. Yeah, there's a lot of um, lack, it, I think, there's not enough, I will say. Um, there's not enough mental health providers out there who has experience to work with trans community. Um, there's not a lot of providers, mental health providers who support uh, trans immigrant community and especially in Spanish, there's not a lot of bilingual mm. com there. Um, so many of the resources out there, they're over capacity. They have waiting lists, you know. And in the meantime, we are suffering. We have a lot of trauma, not only for the situation with COVID, but also the historic, historical trauma that we have as a trans person. And so um, I think we need more people, more resources, more, more mental health providers out there. And um, I, I don't know what will be the solution special, specifically, but I think if we don't, if you don't find, uh, if you don't find uh, mental health providers, please find a support group. You can, you, that can be your, you, you know, your. You can go there and be yourself and talk about your issues, and maybe there you can find some support. 
um, there's online support groups. There are, uh, as Casa Ruby, they have um, support not only for trans individuals, for, but for people living with HIV. Um, I think with my welfare has um, also a lot of groups online right now. We have a, a Facebook group named Vivir Trans, which is living trans. Um, and Facebook that you can go there and ask your questions and we can, you know, do one-on-one -on -one online. Um, so there's, there's not a specifically mental health providers, but there's some group that you can find support in them. Yeah, I agree. Help. Oh, uh, so I was just going to follow up on that. Help people understand. Um, Alexa, I know you are in this position of leadership and you work a lot with Latina LGBTQ folks. Um, help people like me understand what you're hearing, why it's so important, why it's so problematic when there's not enough mental health resources for this community. Like, think, what's some of the things that you're hearing back from folks? I think many times, um, when we don't have, well, it's, I will, I'll be honest with you, Latinx community or Latino community, we don't believe in mental health. Like in my country, we don't have mental health providers. They are mental health providers, but they are working in some other issues, but you don't go to the uh, therapy every month or every week. You don't go uh, to, to find some support on, on therapists because we don't believe in that. We are uh, we live with our traumas and that's it. When we come to this country and we face more things, it's harder. And when someone is saying like, why you don't go to therapy? And we are like, wait, what? Is <laughs> that exist? And so it's hard to, to engage people in mental health or in, in, because we don't believe in that. But when we, when we are like, wait, I need help. You know, I need support. Where I where where I should go? There's nothing for us, and so people tend to do to fight the trauma with addiction, like alcohol or, or or any other substance that is hard, and put them in another situation. So, um, it's hard to talk about mental health in the Latino community. I will say that. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of comments here. Ron, yeah. not sure if you can hear me, but uh, someone wrote that they are glad you're here. They remember talking to it a couple of years ago. Uh, that was powerful and they appreciate your dedication to the DC youth. Uh, can you hear me there, Ron? Yes, I can hear you. All right, since we only have a couple of minutes left, is there anything that you wanna share? Um, you know, cause I thank you so much for jumping in here. But is there anything you want to share um, just about your work and share before before we start to close it out and take the uh, last I, couple of questions? I'd just like to say that um, there has been some progress, but in DC uh, with marginalized youth, there's still a lot of work to be done for the LGBTQ uh, community um, because a lot of the young people um, don't have access to services. Uh, and the outreach is not going into a lot of these communities. A lot of people think that, you know, it's just because you have an office and you say you have services, that means the people are going to come, they're going to get there. A lot of our young people are still not getting the services. And like I just heard the sister talking about mental health services, that's still a, a serious need in our community uh, for several reasons, including the trauma that people uh, go through who are um, LGBTQ uh, uh or just people who come from these communities that are trauma, where trauma exists in so many ways. And we know um, from Check It that hurt people hurt people and heal people heal people. So we can start healing more people in the community, then more people will be healed and we'll see the violence and we'll see the prosperity that a lot of the LGBTQ community uh, 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 actually has will, will pass down to the, the youth that I've worked with. Uh, and, and, and in closing, I would say, um, you know, when I worked with Check It, we never got uh, resources initially to do the work. So we were only be, well, we, we were only able to break up a bad situation, which was bad only in some ways, good in a lot of ways, but we weren't able to service the 200 children who were in Check It. So the people who we were, we were able to invest mm. the time with and spend the most time with, like Trey and other people, they're doing well, you know, but somebody opened the door for Trey. Somebody gave him an opportunity to use his talents, her, you know, uh, or, or her talents the way that she wanted to use them, 
right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of our young people don't get those opportunities. I tell people all the time, when I came home from prison 25 years ago, the only different uh, that time uh, other than the other five previous times was I had an opportunity and somebody showed me a way to use my talents in, in, a, in, a, in a way that was productive to myself and my community. Uh, and from that, and I close with this, Checker has acquired um, $2 million worth of, worth, of, worth of property on Martin Luther King Avenue, where we're doing the Go-Go Museum, we're doing the Culinary Arts Program, nice. and we're doing a rooftop, which is gonna be like, it's a, it's a hub for the community, uh, where young people have ownership, not just putting their names on the fly, but putting their names on deeds. You know, it's a big difference when you, you take young people and you, you say you're doing something with them, but then they don't win, you only win. But in this right. situation, some of the members of Checker, their names are on deeds and on on, 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 um, on corporations. And some people are working and doing uh, 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 what they need to be doing, but it's still far too many more that we have to reach. And that takes a very st- strategic uh, effort and it's not easy. It's not right. easy at all. And, right. and, and I'm a straight guy working with gay children. And I will tell you, I thought my work was hard when I dealt with gangs in DC, but the stuff that these young people have been through and the trauma that a lot of them have been through with nobody addressing it or helping them until they reach the age of 25, that's a sad situation. All right, we've got uh, about four minutes left. I wanna respect everyone's time because this is supposed to end at 1.15. Uh, so we're going to go around and I just want you all to share something that you would like audience members to take away. And Trey, to put you on the spot, I will start with you. If there's one thing you would like folks to take away from this, what is it? But you got less than 60 seconds to talk because you got to fit everyone in here. I want people to get help. If you need help or resources, reach out to people. Make Google your friend. Like reach out to uh, services if you need mental health services. Um, anything that you need, reach out to people because hiding in the house and staying behind certain things and just watching stuff from the screen is not going to get the help that you need. So if you're going through something, just reach out to people, reach out to people. Beautiful. Alexa? Yes, don't suffer in silence. Uh, Use the social media to find support and you will find it. All right. What about you, Keisha? Are you still with us? Absolutely. Uh, We are here. We are visible and awareness and community is key. Awesome. Ron, anything else you want to add? One thing for folks to take away with them? I would just say anything is possible when we all work together and love each other no matter what. Anything is possible. So uh, as things have changed uh, shortly on Pennsylvania Avenue, I think it's time for everybody (laughs) just to come together and work together and try to take 20 steps forward after we've gone back like 10 steps. Working together is one. Thank you all so much. Uh, This was such an amazing discussion. Um, Trey, Ron, uh, and Alexa, you were a little bit in the film as well, right? I'm sorry? Were you also in the film? No. No, I wish. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Thank you all. The film was absolutely- (laughs) <laughs> right so Trey when you guys do part two make sure you add Alexa in there she's also going to jump in there uh, but thank you guys so much for having this conversation with us um, yes, it was thank such a great you discussion so much for me. thank you Feeny. no thank you all for chatting I myself was able to take stuff away from this so I'm so excited um, I don't know if there's a way for everyone to share their social in the chat room just in case anyone wants to connect you all um, yes yeah, I mean, we're live for another 60 seconds. So if anyone wants to put your social in there, that way people can reach out to you if they have any questions or want to chat with you more. Um, in fact, I'm going to put my social in here because I definitely want to connect with everyone. Because um, uh, Keisha and Alexa and Trey, y'all are just dropping all these knowledge bombs and I just want to get more of it. So everyone, please drop your social in there. And thank you, thank you, thank you all for joining us. I don't know if Tom needs to, um, no, I'm sorry, if Kevin needs to jump back in here as we close out.